How's it going everybody? Dato Doi here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video and this time we actually have a lot to cover because we're going to be going over the most recent balance patch which was actually pretty gigantic all things considered so my apologies if this video comes out a little later than I would have originally liked it to. Now I will say right off the top here to help speed things up I am going to be skipping over things that I don't feel are too important to a majority of the player base but of course the link to the patch notes in their entirety will be listed in the description below so if you ever really want to read the notes in their entirety you can do that as well. Let's kick off the patch notes by starting with the quality of life changes made to the game. There are actually some really good ones here. Starting with ranked match, you no longer get to see your opponent's square color before you accept the game. Obviously, this is going to affect pink squares a lot more than, let's say, green squares because a lot of people on console and on PC dodge when they see a pink square, uh, so this is going to help those people get more matches. There was also massive improvements to training mode, just making it a way better training mode overall. You can set levels for Gohan and stuff like that, choose which member of the Ginyu Force you want to start off with and they have like recording slots now the, the training mode overall just got a lot lot better which is something a lot of players really appreciate and I think the last quality of life change that really matters is probably the character selection screen cursor getting a huge buff in movement speed <laughs> I've never actually said it out loud but how slow the cursor moved actually always bothered me in training mode when I was trying to pick my cast so this is actually something I really appreciate all right now that we've gotten past the really small stuff we can actually go into some characters here so let's go ahead and start off with Piccolo Gohan and Frieza since they are the first listed in the patch notes. Piccolo did not change much at all. His homing energy blast simply just got increased hit stun and recovery frame. So that means he's going to recover from it a little slower, but the enemy's also going to take some more time recovering from the attack itself should they be hit by it. And on the complete opposite end of the spectrum from Piccolo, we have Teen Gohan and Frieza who got a decent amount of changes. For starters, Teen Gohan can now move in the air while after performing his crouching special slash his bomb. His bomb also got an expanded hitbox for the beginning of the attack, and now his Z assist moves more forward while rising. Basically overall, this is actually really good for Teen Gohan players because it's going to make those bomb combo loops he does a lot easier and more consistent, which is really good for Teen Gohan because he was already pretty decent. Now it's just going to be easier for him to get that big damage. And the Z assist change certainly doesn't hurt him at all. It just gives him a bit more forward motion, so it could actually be a bit better. I don't know how much more useful it's going to make it, but it's not like it got nerfed or anything. Frieza is the character out of the three that definitely has the most to talk about here because his standing special, we have reduced the startup frame that just makes it faster. His assist got to see an increase to the hit stun. And then the last big change is reserved for Golden Frieza. Once you're in Golden Frieza, you now have access to something called Reverse Beat, which allows you to go into any moves you want uh, from any move you want. Think Adult Gohan level seven and Vegito, for example. So what this does for Frieza players is this really changes the game of what your optimal combo is when you're in Golden Frieza form. Now I will say, unfortunately for Frieza, I don't think these buffs are going to help him all too much. His assist is still pretty whack, and he can only access Golden Frieza once per game, which really sucks. I, I don't know why they have that on there as well, since it's clear that they want Golden Frieza to be something really cool. Up next, we have Ginyu, Trunks, and Cell. Let's go ahead and start with Ginyu, who is already really good and starting to get a lot more notoriety. His Crouching Heavy can now combo into his Standing Special. Of course, that means his Ginyu Force. And Jace got a little buff to his Hit Stun, uh, which is important because usually when you have Jace coming up, you most likely want to always use the Purple Comet attack, but maybe now there will be some scenarios where you think, hey, maybe I just want to rock out with Jace. Ginyu's Assist also got an increase to the Hit Stun, which makes it a little bit better of an Assist. Unfortunately, Strong Jersey uh, re got reduced blood block stun, uh, which does make it a little worse when you're just throwing it out there. But now the trade-off is when you use a medium or heavy version, uh, they actually bounce off the wall, which could lead to more interesting combo routes for Ginyu players. Overall, Ginyu got a little bit of both buffs and nerfs, but I think the buffs actually make Ginyu into a more interesting character, and he was already good to begin with, so yeah, Ginyu players, you're good to go. Trunks also got some decent buffs, which I think a lot of Trunks players are going to appreciate. His standing special and jumping special and moves like that now when the hitbox of these attacks disappear, uh, when Z reflected or, you know, super dash through, you can cancel into a special move after that, which is actually super good. You know, it, <laughs> my friend plays Trunks and whenever he throws one of those out in neutral, you know, because it's a beam, he's always said, you know, that's a beam attack. It should work like a beam. Well, now instead of just getting punished for that flat out, you can actually cancel into a down heavy, uh, which is super good for you know, trying to force your opponent into a bad situation. It's going to make them respect it a little more, is what I'm trying to say. His assist actually got some better hits done and is looking super good right now. And his Shining Slash Heavy version got a lot faster. Overall, I don't think Trunks is going to break any records, but he did get a little better and a little more interesting, in my opinion. And Cell, of course, the star of the show, a lot of us thought Arxis might come in here and buff this man, uh, and I think it's safe to say that they did not end up doing that, which is good. His lights both got a little slower, his low kick got some damage scaling to it, which is going to be a theme for this man. 
His jumping special also got some damage scaling, and his aerial rolling crush can no longer hit the opponent on the back. So what did Cell lose? He lost a little bit of damage here and there. He lost some touch of death combos simply because of how much scaling that key blast in the air gives him. Overall, just lost some damage here and there, and now he can't cross up with aerial rolling crush, which uh, which was a pretty decent tool that I saw Cell players use, but now that's simply not an option for them to go for. Overall, I'm really happy with these Cell nerfs. It's going to make him into a much more acceptable character, you know? They didn't take away any tools for him, so Cell players can still play him like he's Cell, uh, but now they're just not going to get rewarded as heavily. Moving on to Android 18 and Gotenks. Let's go ahead and breeze right through Android 18 because most of her stuff is pretty basic. She can now whiff her lights by holding back and pressing them. Her barrier comes out faster both as a move and as an assist. And if they hit the barrier, if you hold R1, you, you can go ahead and cancel the barrier into a super. It also goes over that they buff their grapple, but don't get too excited because I still think her grapple isn't that great. The range increase was definitely not a lot, but you can now go into a super from the light version when previously you could not, which is good. So if anything, at the end of the game, you're just trying to get a little more damage, you're pressuring them on block, maybe you can consider the light version, but I don't know, you maybe just continue that block pressure, bro. Gotenks, I feel, is definitely a little more interesting when compared to Android 18. He got some buffs to his Die Die Missile Barrage, which was always just a really, really awful move for Gotenks. It, it didn't really have any uses. Uh, it was always just like, why do that when you could just throw out a single key blast and control neutral a little better. He also got some bug fixes to Galactic Donuts, which isn't too important for us. And then he also received some pretty sizable nerfs, which uh, the landing recovery on his Miracle Super Punch Medium uh, is now increased if you don't hold the button down. His rolling kick takes a little more time to recover, but you can also air dash and double jump out of the move, which is just great. You know, that's that's going to be something like a quality of life change for Gotenks players. And probably the most important part of this Gotenks nerf is that if you whiff Vengeful Shout, the landing recovery frame has been increased if you perform a feint. So what this means is that if you want to fake them out with the classic Gotenks mix-up of Mouth Beam, hold it, and either go for a light or overhead. Now if you go for the light option, it's going to take a little more time for that light to come out, which makes it easier to block if you're on defense. It doesn't completely kill the mix-up, but it does make it a little easier to deal with. Moving on, we have Krillin, Kid Buu, and Majin Buu. Let's go ahead and start with my favorite character in Dragon Ball Fighters, Krillin. And he has gotten some really, really interesting stuff. I don't think it's solved, you know, the big problem of Krillin, that being that his assist is just not too great for what the meta of the game is, that being, you know, rush down and everything. But that doesn't mean I'm not super excited for these buffs. So the really important part of Krillin's patch is that he's completely changed in terms of his normal key blast. It used to be that when you were on the ground and you clicked your special button, you would throw key blast out, and if you did nothing else, they'd hit your opponent. If you clicked it again on the ground, they'd go up, and if you were in the air and clicked it again, they would go down. Now though, Krillin players have totally new options that were never available to them before this patch. You can bend only one of the fireballs up, you can bend the fireballs up when you're in the air if you want to. It's actually super crazy. And also, when an opponent attacks, his rock no longer breaks. Uh, so that's, you know, something. But yeah, super excited for these Krillin changes. Oh, also his solar flare is invincible to jumping attacks, uh, meaning it's going to be more like an anti-air kind of thing, which means I'll probably be using it a lot more. Overall, super happy with these Krillin buffs. I don't think he's going to be top tier or even high mid tier, but you know, Krillin still gets those results and this is going to help him with that even more. And now we have Kid Buu, who in my opinion got probably the biggest nerf so far of the patch, which is, you know, warranted. I do feel like Kid Buu was the best character in the game. His crouching medium kick that goes through the floor lost a little bit of range. It also got a little slower, and it also got some more damage scaling, meaning it's not going to be as good. It's actually a little crazy how much they went after this move, but yeah, definitely nowhere as good as it once was. And they didn't stop there with Kid Buu, they also went after his crouching special. They increased the landing recovery frame, and when the fireball is thrown, it could be thrown downward depending on the opponent's position. That might not sound like a big deal, but Kid Buu's best mix-up in his game was calling out an assist, whiffing that ball, and then going into either an overhead or landing and going into a light or just landing and dragon rushing. Super, super good. It was a big part of Kid Buu's game. That's gone now because you can't phys you physically cannot whiff that move anymore. It's actually a super interesting way to address that, but hey, if that's what they felt they needed to do. And they also took out his boo ball mix up in the corner where you could hit him low, it would drag them out of the corner, and then you could go into an insta ball for a cross up. That that no longer happens because you can't hit an opponent on the back with it. Super crazy. Kid Boo got the shaft. Obviously, his assist is still super, super good. So let's not even pretend like Kid Boo is not going to be an upper mid tier or even high tier character, uh, but he's definitely not the Kid Boo of the old age. Speaking of Boo's, Majin Boo or Fat Boo got a huge buff in my opinion. Standing light. Now the attack will hit a crouching opponent too. This one line. This one line. 
I am so afraid for the Majin Buu future of this game. It's so annoying to play Majin Buu because that fist was such an awful attack. It would go over almost every character in the game, and so it made your combos a little harder to get into, and you know, good Majin Buu players have had to play around that and develop strings that work on every character that don't involve using standing light for the most part. This just makes it a little bit easy for them to get into their combos, which makes it a little bit easier for them to get into the mix-ups, and once Majin Buu has you in his mix-ups, you're looking at some, uh, you know, tough times, so definitely looking forward to seeing what Majin Buu players do with this. Up next, we have Nappa, Android 16, Yamcha, and Tien. Let's go ahead and start with Nappa because he has gotten a lot, a lot of good stuff. I don't think he's going to be top tier by any means, but compared to the old Nappa, this Nappa is a new beast. His standing light will no longer be blocked by standing guard, his crouching medium will no longer be blocked by standing guard, and his crouching heavy got a little boost and hitbox, along with a whole bunch of other buffs that really don't matter too much. The main stuff you're going to want to look for in Nappa now is Man, his, his pressure just got a lot better, because now he has a lot of different light options to choose from. The Cyberman Acid can now be cancelled into Z Reflector Super Dash on block, uh, and that, is, that does kind of suck a little, uh, but still. Nappa's looking way, way better. Nappa players should be celebrating right now. Android 16 actually got some nerfs and buffs as well because he actually lost his auto combo mix up into a, you know, tick throw or grab mix up, whatever you want to call it, where he would delay his auto combo and then the third one would actually grab you through your guard uh, and lead into a combo. That used to be super good. That no longer happens anymore. Uh, but his flying power bomb did gain some invincibility to jump attacks, which is good. Anti air properties are always great. And his ground dynamite driver increased in damage, which is also good. Android 16 was already being played at a high level, and I think that's going to continue. My boy Yamcha got some new stuff on his Neo Wolfang Fist, or the EX Wolfang Fist, and now it actually does a wall bounce, which is super cool. A lot of new Yamcha combos are coming out of the woodworks now, and that's always super interesting. And his Spirit Ball got an increase to the least amount of damage it does, which is just a damage buff for Yamcha. Can't get mad with a damage buff. And TN, who has... <laughs> Yikes, Tien is super good now, guys. <laughs> Tien's actually a little wild. Tien got clones. They gave him the Naruto treatment. Now, now he actually has those four clone boys he rocks out with. And when he's in Sparking, the self-damage of his moves hurt a lot less to himself, uh, which is good. You know, Tien killing himself is a you know, a, a normal drawback of his moves being so strong, but now Sparking kind of, uh, you know, stops that from being as much of a worry. TM was already super good and super useful on teams, so you can expect to see a lot more TM, for sure. Now moving on, we have Hit and both of the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan boys, Goku and Vegeta. I'm gonna be honest, Hit did not get a lot of touches. You know, now he can cancel the second standing light into a crouching light, but that's not too big of a deal, so we can just move on to Goku Super Saiyan God. And it's actually super interesting, his command grab got a lot faster, and it got more damage. So, so yeah, now that it's a lot faster, his command grab is actually super usable in real game situations. Vegeta Blue also receives the pretty sizable mention in this balance patch, and overall he did get buffed. But I'm personally not the biggest Vegeta Blue player, so it's hard to say what this all means practically. Uh, but I do know Caustic, someone in my Discord that plays Vegeta Blue a lot, uh, he was very happy with this, so I assume it was for the better. Now we have everybody's favorite god of destruction, Beerus, as well as Android 21. And I'm going to be honest, Beerus did get some buffs here, such as a, you know, such as a faster standing light, as well as some changes to his assist. But I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I don't think any of this is going to help Beerus at all. Uh, you know, it's just... It's a, it's a shame, really, but I don't think Beerus operates well with the systems at play in Dragon Ball Fighters, and they're going to have to tweak him a little bit more if they're going to ever want to see him be played competitively, uh, which is a shame, but, you know, what can you do? Android 21 lost some range as well as got some extra damage scaling on her crouching medium, uh, which is pretty bad for the character. I know she she liked to use that tool a lot. Uh, her assist did get some buffs here with some more hit stun, but that did unfortunately also come with some decreased damage. But that doesn't really matter too much because if you can get some conversions off of this a little easier, then maybe that's going to add up to more damage in the long run. Everything else listed here is all about her, you know, suction abilities, and I'm going to be honest, I do not have anywhere near enough 21 experience to talk about her, you know, other abilities that she gains from other characters. Coming up on the end of the patch here, we have Bardock, Broly, and Vegito, and Bardock did get some pretty decent nerfs here. His Rebellion Spear Light version uh, lost a little bit of block stun, meaning Rebellion Spear into Vanish is no longer airtight. And his Ground Rebellion Spear actually did get some invincibility to jump attacks, which is, you know, what the move looks like, so I can see that. But they did increase the landing recovery frame, which means that that level 3 mix-up that they that we used to do with Bardock no longer works exactly like that. You know, you can do like a cheap version of that where you do the level 3 and then just micro dash into a jump, and you could do pretty much the same mix-up, but if you try to do that medium Rebellion Spear, that is not going to work out anymore, so I wouldn't even 
even bother using that after the level 3. And the EX version of Rebellion Spear actually got a buff in damage and in duration, so that's pretty good. With Broly, he lost armor to vanish attacks, which is actually super good. I don't know how other Broly players feel about it, but I know whenever I play Broly, getting hit with a vanish attack while you do an armor move is so punishing, because they can just land and instantly punish you before you even recover from doing your move. It's much, much better to just take the vanish attack. I saw a lot of people thinking this was a nerf, and I'm really not too sure how that is, but maybe there is something that I'm missing here. Uh, let me know down in the comments if there is. He also got a better hitbox for his assist, and overall just some other quality of life changes on some of his other moves. So pretty good stuff for Broly. Vegito's barrier got a little bit faster as well as being not as punishable when he whiffs it. His throw also got some invincibility to jump attacks, which is a big theme with this patch. I guess they wanted to add in more normal anti-airs. And his aerial spiral hero shot uh, and into vanish is no longer airtight, uh, which is unfortunate. The last character of the patch is Fu Zamasu, uh, whose jumping light got a bit of a hitbox buff, as well as his assist and divine order getting a lot faster. And that's pretty much everything that I think at least is important from this gigantic patch. It, and it really is a huge patch. Now it is going to take a couple weeks to see where the characters fall. Obviously early opinions point to Tien and Ginyu and you know Nappa being a lot better than they used to be and Kid Buu and Cell getting knocked down a little as well as Bardock. So it's going to be super interesting to see how everything plays out. This is by far the biggest patch so far in Dragon Ball Fighter's history and I think they did a really good job of making it unique. Feel free to let me know down in the comments below what you think about the balance patch as well as how your character was addressed. While you're down there if you like this video and want to see other videos like this make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm Dato Doya. I'll see you in the next video.